Um, Kevin Harper, how's it going? Very good, thank you. Pleasure to be on. Now, I really appreciate you coming on. Now, you have a very interesting story. Um, and, you know, due to the lockdown, your life has changed a little bit. Uh, you got a little bit of attention <laughs> for behaving unscrupulously in the eyes of the coronavirus restrictions. Um, yeah. What's been going on? What are you all about? Um, well, uh, it was a couple of weeks, well, a week before the lockdown was due to, to go. So I think it was on... Uh, I think it was on Halloween, actually. I think it was on the Saturday night on Halloween. Um, I've, I've been searching and researching a lot of things uh, for, for quite a while now. And, and one of the things that I've been searching and researching is about um, my my rights and uh, my rights as a citizen, um, my, uh, my rights as an individual. Um, and there's very different things that I've learned between what's um, a regulation and a uh, and a guideline as opposed to what's legislation and law. And there's even a huge difference between law and legislation. And all, all this sort of came about um, a few years ago. I've, I've, I've never, not, I've not got a criminal record. I, I've never been in trouble with the police. Um, a few years ago, I've, I've had to go through the civil courts on several occasions, taking people court, taking people's courts. And the first time I went to court, it was a pretty daunting process. But then after you've done that first time, you think, oh, that was easy. Mm-hmm. That's not difficult at all. So that I've, I've done the civil process on several occasions, and it's actually really easy. Um, and it's supposed to be easy for everybody to understand. Um, and had I not done that previously, and had I not been researching what I did, I probably wouldn't have been in the position to be able to think, actually, I've got a right to stay open here. I've got a legal right to stay open. Um, Because the thought of being put in front of the court would have probably terrified me. Whereas now it doesn't bother me at all. I Mm. know that I've got inalienable rights and those can't be challenged. So, um, as I said, the civil civil agreements and the civil cases that I've had have given me a lot of confidence to be able to go into court. And then also, um, based on the information and the the research that I've been doing over the last few months, pretty much basically since the first lockdown started, I thought um, the way that the... So, so I found it really unfair that businesses like mine are supposed to close. And just to but, confirm, it's a it's a gym. You you have a gym. It's a gym. It's, it's, a, a gym. it's like a Muay Thai gym as well as, it, you know... Well, it, it, it's, it's a martial arts centre. So we do like Brazilian right. Jiu-Jitsu, MMA, boxing, Muay Thai. Cool. And we also do fitness stuff as well. So it, it's, a, it's a big premises, about 5,000 square foot. Um, and we do kids' classes, we do adults' classes. People come in and train on their own, do whatever, whatever they want. Um, but I found it... Well, it, on the first lockdown, I kind of think that... Well, everybody was kind of pressured into doing it because we thought the coronavirus thing was going to be really bad. And it was going to be, re- oh my, people mm-hmm. were dropping dead in China yeah, and yeah. then people were dropping dead in Italy mm-hmm. and Spain. Mm-hmm. And it was like this wave of deaths going to have come. And so we were like batting down the hatches. We'll stay at home. We'll do whatever we can. But then then businesses were allowed to stay open. Um, friends of mine who work in the National Health Service, they only started getting PPE, extra PPE in the middle of July. Um, the, the first wave of death, uh, occurred um, from March and April. And then after the March and April, uh, the death rate pretty much dropped to where it is and is, is maintained, uh, where it is pretty much all the way through. And there's not mm. been that many deaths from coronavirus. Um, and I would like to say as well that if anybody has died from coronavirus, and not with coronavirus, but from coronavirus, and in fact, anybody who's died as a result of this anyway, I have nothing but sympathy in my heartfelt uh, thoughts mm. go out to everybody that's been affected. However, I just think it's been in a very, very unfair way mm-hmm. in which the country is at to lock down business, certain businesses. So the prime minister has been making decisions based on that my business has got to close. He's no right over my business. I control my business. Nobody else controls my business. My business is scheduled to close, but Baz's pizza shop with a zero food hygiene rating is allowed to open. And I think that's wrong. So anyway, th- th- that kind of uh, was bubbling for a while. And then um, the second lockdown was announced that we're going to go into a lockdown. And I knew it was coming and I prepared, uh, done a lot of preparation for it as well. And I was under the impression, and I still am, that 
I'm legally entitled to open because there's a huge difference between law and legislation. So um, law is heavily based in common law. So like murder, theft, things like that. Where I, if I was to injure you physically, hurt you or damage you or steal from you or injure your property, that's deeply, deeply embedded in common law. Hundreds of years before we had actual laws where you'd go and see the magistrate and say, well, you not hundreds of years, but um, there was it was all all the dealings were based in common law. Then legislation is only a recent sort of tool where it's come as around a government and then government's being formed. And the last couple of hundred years, I mean, you you, you need a you need to be a speed reader to con- uh, to keep up with legislation because mm-hmm. legislation changes all the time. And our laws are based in common law, um, UK legislation, EU law. And then you've got something as a like a, this aspirational thing called the International Declaration of Human, Human Rights. So we've got all different laws that, 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 that bind us. But the main thing that binds us as individuals is UK common law. So I've been doing loads and loads of research. And anyway, so go back to the, 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 the 31st of October, Halloween. I'd had a drink and I thought, I'm not closing. So I put a Facebook post up <laughs> and that it generated a little bit of traction. Yes. It was uh, 180,000 180, people saw that post, mm-hmm. right? And I tagged in it. I said, I'm not closing. Um, I'm staying open because I've, I've got a contractual and legal obligation to my members, mm. right? So I, I'm, and if I close for just what I think is right, I'm technically in, in violation of contract with my mm. members. And mm. they can take me to court. And I, I know that because I've been through the civil cases. Um, so I was, I was saying, well, I'm staying open. You can do what you want. And I'd already made the decision. Um, and I tagged the council in it. It said, uh, let the council know the police and the government, the prime minister himself, and I'm staying open. And then the next, uh, this is on the Saturday night, the Monday morning, I walk into the gym and there's about hundred missed calls on the phone, oh, on man. the gym, on the gym landline. Uh, cause we, we, we don't open on Sundays. So the gym's mm. closed on, on Sundays. We're, we're only a small business. We're not like a, uh, like mm. a JD or anything like that, or exercise for less, or DW. We're, we're not. A, there's just me. It's a big centre, and I've got a team mm. of really outstanding staff. But we're a small business. We're a small business with a, a relatively small, um, medium, medium-sized membership group. We've got about 200 members, um, but that provides us for what we do with what we need to be able to function as a business mm. and be able to function. And, and at the end of the day, I'm not looking to earn a million quid. I just want to live my life in a really happy way, doing the thing that I enjoy. Mm. And I'm not looking to, I'm not trying to pay off shareholders or anything like that. I'm just operating to survive. And And more importantly, I mean, if you look at what your business is, it's wholesome as fuck. And more importantly, healthy. And in times like these, there seems to be a very strange discrepancy between essential and healthy. And it's the people who are deciding uh, what's essential and what's a healthy thing to do um, don't always appear to be the most healthiest people that you see on television. Their foods no, that, I mean, that barely fit it, them. With... <laughs> you go back to uh, Boris Johnson's interview on Andrew Marr when he said, I got coronavirus because I was too too overweight. So why is he closing gyms? Mm. So I, I had a big problem with that anyway. Then also as well, there's a, a few of our members that didn't do well after the last lockdown, the first lockdown. Mm. And and to be fair, not only had I, I have a contractual obligation with them, I had a moral obligation that I think mm. that me staying open is the reason that they're alive. Mm. So I had a moral obligation. And I, we, we lost somebody quite close to us in our family two years ago through suicide. Um, and mm. if we could have done anything at that time, we didn't know. Yeah, We could have done anything at that time, we would have done. Mm. Um and it's it's quite well. Any any death is sad anyway, but particularly avoidable death. And, mm. and when somebody's feeling so low that the only thing that the only way out they can mm. take it is by taking their own life. So I, I had I had a lot of um, feelings about this, and is one of the reasons, as I said, why um, why I wanted to stay open and and fought so hardly to do so. So I think as what, I said, some of the some of the biggest. Uh, reasons for people like yourselves and um, pushing back against these rules is, you know, in the ideal world, 
if I was to write a book or a movie about this being done properly, lockdowns being done properly, it would have to be about health. And in order yeah. to show confidence in uh, the community that you're doing it about health, you have to make great decisions that show it's about health. And the problem is they, they shut down gyms, but they influenced people to go out and get half price on McDonald's and fast food. Yeah. So, you know, at, at that, when that happens, you have people like yourselves and other business owners who are having their freedoms and livelihoods ripped away from them going, hang on a minute, is this about health? Really? Yeah. Um, because if, we, if me and you were in charge, our businesses aside, we would be, I, I imagine the majority of the information in mainstream media will be talking about how to boost your immune system and be a healthy motherfucker, which yeah. they're not doing. We, we had, had nothing foods, about that. Exactly. Supplements, things like exactly. that. Exactly. Vitamin, exactly. vitamin D, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hydroxychloroquine, yeah. 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 alternative yeah. medicines, which, yeah. uh, Potentially, which, but, which are... Mm. But more importantly, the emotional aspect of everything as well there's a huge correlation between stress and illness and yeah. a high emotional well-being and recovery and yeah. you know and but all of this has been heavily ignored in mainstream information there's so much fear porn and fear mongering which is what yeah. made the yeah, virus yeah, yeah. look much worse than what it was and now we're at yeah. this very interesting point in this weird covid journey where small independent businesses, I mean, I also, I, I, I lost uh, my main business due to COVID and I've pivoted and been overwhelmingly successful in the construction industry now. Um, but now we're at this very interesting point now where all these heads in the public are butting heads. And now we're seeing the divide, not through politics um, and not through race or, or not through, uh, you know, transgender and stuff, but through the ideas of whether should we, we should trust the government or not. And yeah. I'm not sure where this is going to go over the next few months, but what I'm interested in hearing is how your journey of standing up to the government and the police ended up. Yeah, well, um, so as I said, uh, that, that initial Facebook post generated 180,000 people. Um, the next, as it going on to the gym on the Monday morning, I'd had loads of phone calls. So one of the phone calls that I did answer was from the Guardian newspaper. Mm. So the guy, the Guardian newspaper wanted to do a follow-up story because uh, they'd seen it. So the, the reporter uh, sort of asked me some questions. So on the Monday night, it goes um, on the, uh, the e, e version of the, of, the, uh, of the Guardian to be like, this is what's coming the next day. Mm. And then on, on, on the Tuesday, that goes out. That generates even more traction. LBC Radio, Talk and Talk Radio, Granada Reports. Mm. And then on the Friday, I was just scheduled to go on um, uh, Good Morning Britain with Piers Morgan and Susanna. Mm. Um, and, but that, that was pulled literally with one, two, two minutes to go because um, the, the, the US election overran. So there mm. was, if you remember at the time, there was, um, there was, a, there was, a, there was an old lady and mum took the old lady out of the care home and then she was arrested. Um, so there was me and her um, sat waiting for it to go on because I was going to have like 10 minutes of her time. She was going to have 10 minutes mm. of her time. And then you could hear the producer in the microphone going, right, we're, we're over and on the election. We've only got one to go with. We're going to go with the gym or the care home, gym or the care home. Right, sorry, Jim, we'll contact you Monday if we need to, but we're going with the care home. Oh, that was it. La I bet you were down. gutted to not oh, have it out with Pierce Morgan, man. Fuming. <laughs> Absolutely fuming. Um, but it is what it is, and and, and, it, and it that happened the way that it happened. Um, but so, as I said, generated loads of media traction, and then on the Thursday when, and it, this is the really interesting bit. So the the lockdown was supposed to come in. I think it was the was it the fourth of November or fifth of November, something like something that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. On, on the midnight of the Wednesday, so the Thursday, everything shut down from midnight on the on the. One minute past uh, midnight on the Thursday mm -hmm. morning, that was it. The whole country was in lockdown. Um, so I'd been searching for the legislation. And in fact, a friend of mine who's sort of personal assistant was sort of sat refreshing the legislation page every sort of five minutes, was searching it for me. Um, so when I opened on the Thursday morning, I'd searched extensively. Um, the council had been on to me on the Monday and said, we, we highly advise that you not open. Um, they turned up with the police as well and they said, we, we really recommend that you don't open. And I said, I'll think about it. Um, mm. And then that was that. So 
Um, on the Thursday, I'd been checking the legislation. There was no legislation. I arrived early at the, biz at the business, opened up, no police, no council, no nothing. So I decided to prod them. So I started checking in on Facebook. This is what we're doing today. Blah, blah, blah. So we get reported and nothing happens. I do a morning class. I've got a, a PT as well. So I do a PT, blah, blah. Nothing happens. No police, no council. I'm hanging around for ages thinking, when's this going to happen? Mm. Uh, didn't happen. So then uh, I, I, I sort of go home in the afternoon, pick me, uh, pick me, pick me son up from school, walk the dogs, and then go back. Um, we back for like five o'clock every evening. So I go back. No police. We do the first class. No police. Check check in again. Do some videos. Put them out on social media. No police. Now you are asking like, for trouble. You sound like exactly. you're enjoying this a lot. <laughs> I love it. I was I was loving it. At the at the end of the day. I picked a, I picked, I'm, I'm the smallest kid on the playground and I mm. picked a fight with the three biggest kids. I picked a fight with the police, the council and the, and the government, the UK government. Um, and I'd openly picked a fight on it as well. But I was I was very confident. You, you don't go picking fights unless you know you're going to win. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. And, as, as, and, 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 and like my wife was saying, what are you doing? You're going to get arrested and da-da. And... Uh, and then, like, my family, I'm in, like, this uh, WhatsApp group with all my family, mm. and they're all saying, oh, you, you're a disgrace. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm having to come out of the groups. And, uh, oh, my God. Oh, we're, just, we're, we're, just trying to, we're just trying to look out for you. And um, mm. so, so, anyway, I come out of all the groups, and I'm literally all the pressure's on. But I knew I, knew I was right. Mm. So, eventually, the police turn up on the Thursday, right? Now, prior to that, I'd been out and I'd uh, sourced... Um, I, I'd written some affidavits and got them notarized, okay, by uh, sworn sworn in front. So mm -hmm. in law, in law, a fact isn't the truth. A fact is an agreement of the parties. So if me and you have a, dis a disagreement, we'd go to court and I'd say one thing and you'd say the other, and the judge, the judge would make a decision about who was right based on the uh, on the. On, on, on the decision. So before the police arrived, on before the lockdown occurred, I'd written an affidavit out and I went and I got it, I got it notarized. I got it uh, sworn. Mm -hmm. okay. Which, and by it, the way, I'm, is a really serious process. It's not like yeah, when yeah, the yeah, movie yeah, yeah. where you see the, you know, getting things notarized in movies, it's it's seen so casual because I don't have much time to put it in. It's it's a very serious legal process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're swearing an affidavit, you're actually swearing it. So it's not just your opinion, you're swearing it in front of God. Mm -hmm. And an unrebutted affidavit in law is fact. So I, I had my affidavits in, in check. I had one for the police and one for the council. Because I've never, for the 12 years that I've been open, I've never had any dealings with the council, not once. So it's not like, for example, we're in food hygiene where we get certified and regulated by the council or in tattoo studios that go out again through hygiene. So the, the, the whole thing that they have is about protecting people. So they regulate those businesses to protect people. And rightly so, do you know what I mean? Mm. But in my business, I'm not been regulated, never once been regulated um, by the council. So I had, I had no contractual obligations with them. In, in law, in common law, if, if, if you've not injured anybody, Everything else is pretty much down to contract law. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so it becomes a civil matter. It. Exactly. So when the on the first video of when the police come in, um, it, and I've got loads of friends of police as well, and I have nothing but respect for the police. So at the end of the day, if if you if you, if you have your house burgled, who are you ringing? The police. Mm -hmm. You want them coming like the cavalry breaking the door down, saving the day. And I've got nothing but respect for the police. And the way that probably I was different from other people is that I treated the, with both the police and the council with absolute respect, um, which is probably one of the reasons, as I said, why it's been successful. When you see some gym owners who were going, no, you're not coming in, da, da, da. I think there was a gym called uh, Rick Gym in Basildon, and the woman was was physically blocking the door, and there was loads of people working out in, in, in behind her. And she was physically blocking the door. Mm. And the police, the police officer was saying, I need to enter, I need to enter, I need to enter. You're not coming in, you're not coming in. I do not consent, I do not consent. Well, all he did was he arrested her for obstructing a police officer. 
So if you're dealing with the police, they do have the power to arrest you. If you're behaving in a, in a very, un, mm. if you're behaving in a way that's not suitable and, mm. and a way that's uh, obstructive. So at no point was I obstructive with the police. Mm. At every point I was kind and courteous and highly respectful. But at the same time, I was very determined to get my point across. Mm. And it showed in the, I think you were picked up by the main online and the guardian and yeah, I, I, I feel the, the fundamental difference in why you, you achieved such a sort of, sort of a low level viral spread, so to speak, um, was the way that you handled it. I, I have yeah. uh, a few people, one I'm trying to get on a podcast at the moment who is really intense with everything from 5g conspiracies frying our brains to microchipping to all this crazy stuff and he leads this group and they get on coaches and they go do the lockdown protests in like pool and bournemouth and bristol and stuff and you know they post loads of live videos of them getting arrested and abused yeah. by the police but the problem is the difference between what you've done and what they're done is they're telling you know they're giving them verbal abuse telling them to fuck off t- telling them that, that you're nazi germany and where you're you've come with some affidavits a little bit of literature about the law and you've said guys you the police like you guys are cool but you're wrong right now and that's yeah, as far as yeah, it goes yeah. And, and if, if you're being obstructive to the police and if you're like, I, I, and I've said all along, it's about uh, peaceful non-compliance. Mm. Uh, and as soon as you start being aggressive, the police are going to win. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. throughout this, if, if, you're poli- if you're peacefully non-compliant, you'll get your point over better than somebody who's shouting and screaming because mm. you'll just come across looking like a dick. It's just like what David um, Icke said about the non-comply dance. Instead of fighting, just, you know, you can not follow the rule- rules in a pleasant way. You don't have to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, what's your opinion about the way in which legislation is created and sold and marketed, really, to the yeah, people so. to then make us police ourselves? Yeah, but that, that, that's mm. exactly right. So, um, so something that I've mentioned this previously. So, if if legislation exists, um, legislation exists to control government employees. So, for example, if you were if you worked at Burger King, right, you're not allowed to eat the burgers at Burger King while you're on shift, okay? Um, and that is pretty much is a massive generalization. That is UK legislation for government employees on shift. So that's your terms and conditions of your contract of your co- your your con- <coughs> your your contract of employment at uh, Burger King. All the things that you can do and all the things that you can't do, okay? Now, if you were on your break at Burger King and went and bought a burger and went down on the other side of the counter and started eating it, and the manager of Burger King came over to you and saying, I'm going to fine you for eating a burger, what would you say? Well, yeah, I shouldn't have been eating the burger. No, you should, because you were on a break. Oh, sorry, I'm on a break. Well, yeah, in that case, yeah, of course. I worked at You're McDonald's. I, I, I've, yeah. I've ate a burger on my break, and I got in trouble for eating a burger when I wasn't on my break. This is a real <laughs> thing. Years ago when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, of course. Yeah, so you'd say, I, I bought this. I've, mm. I've physically paid for it. There's my receipt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not on shift. I'm yep. not working right now for Burger King, mm. um, which is... Like when school teachers, uh, NHS, police, when they're not on shift, technically they don't have to follow UK legislation. Interesting. Now, if you were a member of the public and you walked into Burger King, bought a burger and sat down with your receipt that you'd purchased it and started mm. eating the burger and the manager came over to you and started saying, I'm going to find you for eating that burger, what would you say? You're having a laugh. I don't even work at Burger King. Exactly. And I don't work for the government. I mm-hmm. work for me. So legislation, mm. legislation is consensual. Right. Legislation is consensual. The, the the parts of legislation that are not consensual, which is the ones that is heavily based in UK common law, where you're injuring somebody or damaging their property. So if I have a car crash with you, if I run in the back of you, I've injured you, and I've damaged your property. So mm. therefore, legislation counts because I've injured you, and I've injured you in common law, okay? Mm. Um, if if I don't injure you, if I, if I don't injure you, I've still damaged your property if I just crash into your car. And again, you can get me on common law, but mm. all the other bits of legislation are purely consensual. 
And that's taken me a long time to realise. Yeah. That has taken me and a long time to come to terms with. Because for 15 years, I was in education. Mm. I worked as a teacher. But it's taken me a very, very long time to come to terms with that and actually realise that the laws that we follow, we do so purely out of our consent. So, and I imagine the illusion of consent in this case is the lack of disobedience. And so I imagine because people choose to follow this legislation, that's an acceptance that becomes the kind of, okay. Exactly. And let until somebody, you know, gets pissed and writes a Facebook post and says, no, don't fancy it. Essentially. (laughs) So, so just to summarize, because obviously I I didn't know this and obviously I'd have to, I have to go read up myself, but I would believe what you're saying for the sake of the call. That's how I work. And then I'll disprove later if, if otherwise. So what you're saying is, legislation is consensual and legislation was cr- created no, I, 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 yeah yeah I'll just before you do that yeah that will you won't find that anywhere you that won't be written anywhere right however the people that know know and that's why i didn't get arrested that's Fine. why yeah my gym didn't close sure. not once sure. the whole time sure. well i mean because it, I, I i turned around and mm. said no i don't I, no i'm not closing yeah. and because the, the, because they couldn't demonstrate so one of the questions I asked the police when they were there, um, have I injured anybody, anybody's person or property? No. Mm. Do you, so if I was, let's say, for example, I was at two o'clock in the morning, stood outside um, a house that had just been broken into, and the, the description of the person from the police was that a person matching my description had just broken into that property, mm. the police could very rightly arrest me on the suspicion that had that had burned that property, yeah. Mm. That's fine, because the police can not only arrest me when I've injured somebody; they can arrest me if I'm about to, or they suspect that I'm about to injure somebody or damage their property or person. Mm-hmm. So when I spoke to the police, I asked them, "Have I injured anybody? Have I damaged anybody's person? Am I about to injure anybody? Am I about to injure any damage anybody's person?" And the answer to that was no. No, I'm not. And they couldn't prove that. And the police said on the very first video that the police came in, and I said, is this a criminal matter? And he said, no, it's civil. Mm. So the, the police had no groundings mm. at all. But Absolutely I guess, no. But I guess because it's a civil matter, businesses can still be threatened with fines. Threatened. So, yeah. A fa- no, Who, who's going to threaten me with a fine? Exactly. Well, I mean, it would have to be the council in that case. no. Well, so are the council going to fine? No, no. So, so really, what's happening is they can only propose the fine, and that will go to the courts, and then the courts ultimately will decide exactly. if you get the exactly. fine. And look, look exactly. I've got a letter here because I'm because I'm a fucking idiot. I forgot to renew my MOT, and I got pulled over, and I got busted. Right, slap yeah. on the wrist, and I have a letter. It says you got a hundred pound fine, uh, or you can go to court and contest it. And I'm like, you know what? If I went to court and I said. I had literally a newborn baby. I was driving to the airport at 3 a.m. I'm super knack. I've just lost my business. Haven't been thinking straight. Coronavirus has been crazy. They'd have gone, you know what, mate? Yeah, don't worry about it. Take the points and don't worry about the money. But no, they won't. Me, they, I'm just they, like... They'll, 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 they'll give it you. They'll, they, you, you, you. No matter what you say, mm. you'll you'll get issued with, if it's a points and the fine, they'll get the mm. fine. Because that mm. you're going there under the guise that you're already sure. guilty. But what I'm saying so, is... What, what I'm saying is... But two seconds. But what, what, no, what, what I'm saying is um, they're... If you if 100% of the people pay these fines, yeah, then 100% of these fines will be collected, yeah? Exactly. If everybody went to court, not all of the fines will be collected because there will be so many times the, the judges or whoever is residing the decision over that in some circumstances, in fact, in many circumstances, say, you know what, we're still charging you, we're still prosecuting you, but there's no fine to pay. Exactly. And that's the and compliance that's what, thing. Yeah, and that's one of the things that... That's one of the things that um, in one of the earlier videos that I said, I said about swamping the, the judicial, the civil courts and the criminal courts and, and swamping them by just, just to get, if you get a shoot with a fixed penalty, just fine, just take it to court. Mm. Take it to court, but do it in the right way and you'll get off with it. Because mm. if you get a shoot with a fixed penalty war, a fixed penalty notice, um, you can either pay it, option number one. Mm. Option number two, not pay it and plead not guilty and go to court and get found not guilty. Option three, get found guilty in court and be forced to pay it. And as you've said, not many people realise there's an option number four, 
which is you go to court, get found guilty, but the judge says, because actually this, so like, for example, slavery was a law, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. People who freed slaves mm -hmm. were criminals. Mm -hmm. The law doesn't necessarily mean that it's, un, that it's just, and some laws are very unjust. And it is quite probable that based on um, the, 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 this whole sort of fine system that's been generated um, from, oh, we're going to come out and issue you with a fine. We're going we're to fine you, we're going to fine you, we're going to fine you. And then they said in the Daily Mail about four weeks ago that um, the police chief of the Met said they're going to stop issuing fines uh, in the 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 skirt that they're going to be overturned in court. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. of course they are. Yeah, of course. and they were only going to they were going to issue them as court summons instead, uh, mm. because quite rightly the only place that can issue a court issue a fine is a court. And as I said, the the fourth one is is mm. being found guilty and and, it, and and the judge saying due to the unfairness of the legislation, there's mm. no fine to pay. Mm. So. Of course, you weren't arrested because we've determined no. that it's not a not, criminal. Not, wasn't a criminal issue. Not injured were you, anybody. Were you issued with a fine, or did, you know, did the council no. propose to no. the courts that you were fined? No, because uh, going back to the story that I said earlier on, it was on the mm. Thursday. So the Thursday there was no legislation. The legislation, believe it or not, didn't land till five thirty-five p.m. on Friday. Mm. So there was a, there's a video on the video. I say to the police on the video, I'm no expert in law, but if I stole your phone, I would suggest that you would arrest me under Section 5 of the 1968 Theft Act. It's actually Section 1, not Section 5, but I got it wrong. All right? You'd, you'd arrest me under that act. So, and I asked the, 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 the enforcement officer, the head of the enforcement team of the council, and I said to her, can you tell me what law I have broken? And she turned around and said, <laughs> it's not a test. Yeah, yeah, I I'm remember so saying that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is a test. Yeah, it is. If you can't... So if I said to you, you owe me £10,000 because of regulations, what would you say? Prove it. Exactly. So I said to her, show me the legislation. Mm. And the legislation wasn't even written. Mm. So and so then they tried to back me into a corner about oh well uh, what uh, just because uh, it's cause then I said because because we're not in because we're there's, there's because it's a civil matter mm. it's a contract agreement and I do not have a contract with you if you can provide me with a signed copy of the contract which was in my affidavit which was in my affidavit um, the, the, there's there's no agreement between Wigan and Wigan Council and, and my gym so. Anyway, she went away, said, oh, I'll email you some information. She went back the next day, about four o'clock, sent me an email. Bear in mind, there was no legislation. And again, pointed me to the guidance. And I went, I I'm opening. I'm sorry, but mm. no, I'm opening. It's just guidance um, at that point. Exactly. The gui guidance and regulations mm. can suck my dick. Mm -hmm. They are not law. And even if they were law, they're only consensual law. Mm. Unless I, and then some gyms have been issued with closure orders, mm -hmm. right? Environmental health have been in and issued with the closure order. So you can issue a closure order on a restaurant, do you know, mm -hmm. that gives people food poisoning. Mm -hmm. And the reason you can issue a closure order is because you've injured them by giving them food poisoning. Yeah. You can't close my business. I'm not doing anything wrong. I've always had this uh, opinion. I've mentioned it many times in this podcast. Sometimes we get c conspiratorial on here with my friends. But one thing I've always seen with, with stuff when it comes to authority is that I don't think a, a lot of people don't realize that the thing that keeps them in this kind of prison of blind obedience is this whip. And that whip is just based on their care threat. of what, other, of what yeah, other people yeah. think of them, not just the threat, yeah, yeah. but care about what other members of the public think of them. And that's been used to control shame. It's been used to control people for yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And that's something that's happening in this case where, you know, the legis legislation and the law actually isn't in place as mainstream media are telling people are. So the only way they can get everybody to comply is through the fear of persecution of their peers yeah. being policed by ourselves. Yeah. And of course, yeah. you transcended the need to care what other people thought of you. So you've gone ahead and done it. And if, if more people can stop caring about the implications that opinions have on them yeah. from other people, then we can start making proactive change and start challenging the status quo. No, nobody would have done this in the first lockdown because 
everyone was scared that they were going to injure somebody. Exactly. But now the 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 lies that drip out of the government's <laughs> mouth mm -hmm. is just it's ridiculous. Wear masks, don't wear masks. Uh, mm -hmm. Go to work, don't go to work. Um, stay at home, eat out. Oh, you we've all got coronavirus mm -hmm. again because you all went to the pub. Well, mm -hmm. come on. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The government handling of this all the way through has been an mm -hmm. absolute joke. Yeah, I mean, an absolute if, joke. If it was as serious as it was, all. Through lockdown, all fast food restaurants would have been closed. There would have been government-sponsored and subsidied salad bars and healthy food things pop up. Yeah. Gyms would have been allowed to open. They, they'd have the pubs were the first thing to open. And I, I know you like a drink. I know you like a drink. Sure. But hear me out. Hear me out. Horrible for you, especially your immune system. And but we, that was like the first thing we were allowed to go and do. Yeah, you know yeah. what? We're opening the pubs. You can go get pissed. You're not allowed to go to the gym. You're allowed to go eat McDonald's and go grab a few beers. But we care about your health and we care about old people. Yeah but go and destroy your bodies and go and destroy. It makes no sense whatsoever. And if people out there want to vilify people like yourself, um, who owns a gym, who has a wholesome business that contributes to the community in both mental health and physical health, but you yeah. want to vilify this person because there's a deadly virus and he's killing people, then the, the issues with you, the issues with that person with that opinion, not with the person on the receiving end with it, trying to react in a way that they think is right for everybody else. Yeah. And as well, going back to that as well, is look at the death rates in from April that just fell. So mm. the, the 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 initial group of people that died from coronavirus were on average 70 <laughs> not of coronavirus, sorry, with coronavirus. And that's been a very clever use of that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've been dying with coronavirus, mm -hmm. 74 years and above, 2.4 other major illnesses. Mm -hmm. And now, so then then as soon as the April came. The death rate fell to in May, June, July. Nobody was dying. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? If it was mm -hmm. so deadly, if it was so deadly, it th that death rate wouldn't have changed. Mm. I mean, we it's can... only started. It's only started becoming more prevalent again yeah. because of the PCR test, which is ninety three percent. Again, due to Matt, Matt Hancock's words, ninety three percent false positives. Why? Yeah. We, if that was a pregnancy test, mm. do you know what I mean? Mm. The, the, the baby's <laughs> being born all over the place. My issue with the way in which statistics are used and the way in which we view health uh, nowadays is every single decade, we keep proving ourselves wrong from the decade previous. And I don't think this is going to be any different. I think we're going to be looking about back at how health the system is now and how we dealt with this 20 years from now going, bro, we got it wrong again, because that's the fucking trend. So that when you start using these statistics and start using the way in which we, we measure risk of pandemic and you shut the world down, there's an overwhelming chance you are doing the wrong thing because we've done the wrong thing every single time when we look back at history yeah. because we found a way of doing it better. And the problem is we, it looks like we spend so much time on what we should do now. Uh, and uh, we, we can argue as much as one about figures or if coronavirus is as deadly as it is, all we can go by is how we are treated during this pandemic. And it has not been fair. It has not made any sense. It hasn't been due to health, not whatsoever. It hasn't been due to protect old people. Before the pandemic happened, elderly people were left freezing in their homes because their energy bills were absolutely sky high. People were yeah. knocking on their door, goons collecting money and threatening with fines for bloody TV licenses when they're just trying to live out the rest of their bloody lives, trying to yeah. breathe. And so it was, it was never about protecting old people unless they actually started doing stuff to show us they want to protect old people. They never did that. Their version of protecting old people was destroying our lives. And that didn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. And the, and the, the government will just go, oh, well, we got it wrong. It doesn't matter. No, mm -hmm. the, the government's criminals. The government need to take into account for this. Mm. And the fact that the, they're like, oh, well, we just we, we made, a, made a mistake. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Hancock, witty, Valens, that, what they're doing is mm. criminal. So yeah. if, you're a, if, you're, if, you, if you're a stockbroker and you know that the market is going to go up or down mm. and you bet on that, that's called insider trading. Mm -hmm. You go to prison for that. Yeah, yeah. But not only are they insider trading because they know that the vaccine prices mm. are going to go sky high because they're pushing the vaccine. They're actually influencing the, the policy themselves. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely criminals. All of them mm. are criminals. And then now you're seeing a couple of Tory backbenchers who are fighting for the people. Who'd have thought mm. for that? Tory mm -hmm. backbenchers fighting for the people. Mm -hmm. The, the la Labour have rolled over. 
they've rolled over, and they're supposed to be the people, uh, the party for the people. They've rolled over, they've turned belly up and just they've just capitu- capitulated. Mm. And it's Tory backbenchers who are the only politicians fighting for the UK poli- uh, UK public. Mm. All the politicians are criminals. Mm. All of them are criminals, apart from the couple that are actually fighting to return our civil liberties back. Mm. So did you close the gym? No, not at once. all. So you, so you stayed no. open, or at least for your private members no, anyway. I think you closed to the public, didn't you? But you, you kept yeah, your members. Well, and... we're, 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 only private mem- we're only private members gym anyway. So mm. we, we didn't close. Um, we, we, we didn't close. We stayed open all the way through. Uh, we never got fined. Uh, well, we didn't get fined. We didn't receive any fixed penalty notices. My affidavit, uh, my umra, but my affidavit has been I've issued the Wigan Council with a notice of default uh, because I physically gave it to that woman in her hand uh, mm-hmm. from Wigan Council and I said to her, That's a public document. You're now in charge of that. Um, I've issued the council with a notice of default. So Wigan Council can't come back to me over mm. anything ever again. Mm. And then also, because I'm a very kind and considerate person, I sent it them again, recorded delivery to the head of the council, asking for a signed copy of the contract that I've signed giving them authority over me, mm. and they've not provided that. That expires today. So on Monday, I'll issue them with another notice of default, and they can never, ever, ever challenge me on my authority over anything ever again. Yeah, of course, unless, of course, they tried to get you on something criminal, which is, is the yeah, thing that, that people try, and, and, the little fuckers for that. But... <laughs> so they would have to yeah. prove that I've injured mm-hmm. somebody. And exactly, not... exactly. Um, I remember that video. Uh, it was one of the ones that went viral with you. You had the police, you had like three or four of them in masks, uh, stood like within yeah. like half a meter with each other, might I add. And, yeah. uh, and you had the council lady and uh, she was telling you essentially that what you were saying was incorrect and that your grasp on legislation and law was, was was incorrect since then and up till now have you sought any qualified legal advice and had any conversations with people i've had um conversations with two people uh, one of them's a barrister mm-hmm. um and one of them is a high ranking police officer in a different force right and they both gave me the same information mm-hmm. um and I've never been fined. I've never mm-hmm. been arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, and we remain fully open. Um, but it was only after that, after that conversation with the lady that said, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Because I've only gone away and, and researched this myself. I've never asked anybody's opinion on this. I've never mm-hmm. searched anybody. So I've gone out and spoke to different people and said about, is this right? Is that right? Is this right? Um, and everything that I've said is true. Mm-hmm. So the, the, there's one thing that I, I, I want to cover because it's really e- easy for, for people like us charged with passion and stuff to get caught up in the, um, the emotional side of what's going on with the world right now. Um, oh. The he said, she said stuff. And when we look at the ingredients of what's causing such tension between friends and family member and members of the public is people not understanding that we all have different experiences in this world so for example you know somebody that i know spends you know all their time in a pandemic on furlough getting 80 percent of their salary staring in front watching mainstream media only getting all of their information from one source and then they see somebody like you doing what you're doing of course they're going to be pissed with you and no, it's not, not and, and it's I, you know and it, like it's not their fault we can be compassionate they've just been yeah. caught in this one stream of information in this prison of uh, a one narrative and on the other side you're not on furlough your business is being threatened to be taken away from you pretty much yeah um and you've built this business you've there would have been times when you didn't earn much money and times anyway without a, being told you need to close and so your version of reality and the where you get your information from is completely different now if everybody could just focus on the concept of different experiences lead to different versions of reality and different behavior yeah, yeah. and different strongly held opinions we might all just fucking start getting along but until then yeah. it's we're going to be fighting until someone gains full control over us to the point where you know we can't do anything for our freedoms yeah it's absolutely bang on man. absolutely bang on because i was vilified by certain people um, and to some people, I was a hero based on what I was doing. So mm. again, it's all about perspective, isn't it? It's about perspective mm. and your individual uh, interpretation based on your experiences of what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that absolutely fits that. Absolutely fits that completely. 
Um, but as I said, we, we've uh, at the same time as taking into consideration what other people have felt and what some mm. of the people have said, the only people that mattered to me as a business were my members mm. because mm -hmm. I, I'm, I can take into consideration what other people are saying, but I don't have any contractual obligation to the general public. I only have a contractual obligation to my members. And because of mm. that, I was I, I felt that I was forced to stay open mm. um, and do what I did. Uh, and it was been it's been incredibly positive all the way through and has proved to me that all the things that I knew about the legal system and law was absolutely bang on. Mm. Have you had anyone test a positive for COVID in your gym? Not one. We 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 so we have a was a, a temperature test on arrival and people are, can't. So you're not allowed to come from work and change into your training clothes and train. Mm. You have to arrive train uh, in, in clean clothes. We ask you a screening set of questions before you train, and 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 as well, we generally deal with young people, and young people are fit and healthy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, we've not had anybody. We've had somebody who was sat in it. So we have some kids that come as well, and they've not been allowed to come for certain occasions because somebody that they were in a class with in school got coronavirus so they couldn't come. But nobody directly has been affected by this. Mm. Nobody mm. directly has been affected by what we've done. And we've uh, we've operated within the law, uh, within legislation, and we, we've operated safely for everybody, not only for our members, but also the contact from our members to the general public. That's not been an issue either. And mm. nobody from Majestic Gym has even tested positive. How has the uh, reception been percentage wise? Has it been an overwhelming sense of support and an, an agreement? Because yeah. there is an yeah. element of living in a bit of an echo chamber, especially yeah, in I your mean, industry. I mean, you're you know all just you're badass fighters. You don't give a shit. And trying to yeah. tell a fighter to tell you know, tell someone to do what to do in that sense is you, there's going to be an element of the audience kind of matches what you what you're saying. But how was it received genuinely? Um, thousands of messages, literally thousands of messages. And within that, I've been helping other gyms and barbershops and tattooists and mm. uh, nail boutiques and everything stay open. I've, I've, I've had nothing. I've had about 10 messages of, uh, of, of, uh, of people complaining what I'm doing, saying that what I'm doing is wrong. Mm. But the 99.99% of everything that I've done, uh, received, sorry, has been nothing but positive mm. um, because I'm just trying to help people mm. who are in the same situation as me who are just wanting to earn a living. What do you make of the uh, the tier system? Nonsense. <laughs> what well, uh, what doesn't make sense to me? Well, I live in gorgeous, sunny Devon in the south, very far from you. I don't tend to go north of the wall, uh -huh. and uh, and it's our coronavirus uh, situation is very good down here. Apparently, Cornwall's even better. That's been put into tier one. Tier one, but, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but Devon. I mean, we're in tier two, right? Whatever that is. London is tier two. The bloody yes. epicenter of the fucking pandemic is in tier two. Um, exactly, exactly. And it it's, makes, again, the, it's, again, it's not making in, sense. Interestingly, interestingly, Liverpool's in tier two. So I live on the border of Liverpool, probably mm. about, about uh, six, seven miles away from the border of Liverpool, which becomes L postcodes. Mm. And then Greater Manchester, because I'm, I'm on the edge of that, I'm on Greater Manchester. Mm. Greater Manchester is tier three, but Liverpool's tier, what, tier two. Interestingly, that's because Liverpool's in tier two because they went in and the army issued loads of tests. Here's coming to a city near you, uh, Birmingham, Manchester, everywhere else that's tier three. You watch the army start rolling in and issue tests. Mm -hmm. 100%. Wow, 100%. there'll be a syringe in the hand next as well. Kevin, I bet you're really looking forward to this all blowing over once the vaccine comes. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> as if I'm going to be taking that. <laughs> yeah, well, um, that's the thing. But I, that's I'm become a looking... taboo. That's that's become a thing. People are worried about telling people that, yeah, maybe I'm not going to take it. I, I'm openly telling yeah, people not it? to take it. Yeah, I, openly yeah. Openly telling people not to take it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody's got free choice and free will. But there is no way on this earth that me or my family will be taking that vaccine. Yeah. And my, my immune system, uh, my immune system is more than more than capable 
of dealing with it. I've not been ill. I've not worn a mask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've not been ill at any point through mm-hmm. the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm high risk as well because I've got yeah. respiratory issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, if I was doing what, what I think was the safe thing to do, was be wearing a mask. But yeah. I've not worn a mask. I've continued to do what I've done. I've gone to work. I've interacted with people on a close basis. I haven't socially distanced all the mm. way through, and I've been I've been nothing but a picture of health. I guess obviously. And why the... why would why would I get a vaccine mm. uh, for for an illness that, uh, for a disease that's got a ninety nine point nine 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 five percent survival rate? Mm. It's nonsense. Well, it's a vaccine with a ninety four percent success rate for a disease with a ninety nine percent success rate of living Why would you do um it? but you know at the same time you know me and you have been you know living our lives as normal but there have people that have been out there who've caught this virus yeah. and died and that sucks um, and, 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 and th- there's always going to be a small group of people that are negatively affected away mm, from a statistical norm mm, and i really and mm. i've said that before i feel genuinely sorry for anyone who's been affected and if, if uh, what i don't get is why, why are people be why why are they testing why are they testing healthy people that doesn't make sense in itself. Mm. Why are mm. you testing healthy people? If you are really in risk and you feel you need to get a vaccine, go and get your vaccine. Mm. No problem at all. Mm. And if that means that more people take it and the world returns to normal, great. Go and take it. But I won't be taking it at all. Mm. Something I've really started to notice is um, everyone says, you know, we don't have propaganda in this country. Well, oh, God, you know, how, how many movies do we have to watch where the CIA save the world? Do you know what I mean? It's It's everywhere. But one thing that's really starting to happen is the vaccine stuff where, you know, news articles are coming out to say that Boris Johnson's going to take it on television and that now George Bush, Obama, and what's the one that got blown by secretary Bill Clinton is co- is going on TV uh, to show, you know, it's a safe vaccine, which no one fucking knows what's in the syringe, but what exactly. we're seeing is this global kind of programming now of, show and tell look see it's okay take the vaccine and i yeah. I put radio one on i went to co-op the other day and uh to buy some fruit and th- it came on the news on radio one that um a va- the vaccine's going to be available blah 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 very soon and then they do you know how much playing... do you know how much pfizer it's paid out last year Oh, crazy, crazy crazy on, on on damages but they st- on radio one they started playing is after they reported in the news that the vaccine was coming it started playing the word is on your lips say the words the word is on your lips and then start going vaccination and they're all fucking singing it in the studio and i'm just there like raw and you're trying way too hard now like th- this is just it's gone beyond uh what they well, should be doing is presenting a information a lot, of, a lot of people aren't aware of that you're very mm-hmm. you, you, you you you've cottoned on to that a lot of people are not picking up on that mm-hmm. they're just going along they're absolutely asleep. They're mm-hmm. just trundling through the lives, not it's questioning the, anything. Yeah, it's the and mind it, matrix. We're, 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 we're in absolutely in an age of awakening. Um, mm-hmm. And more and more people are waking up to this. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this flops in relation to the number of people that take it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to leave in a minute or so. Yeah, man. I'm going to go and pick my uh, little boy up from uh, school. But, awesome. Um, it's, been a, it's been a really nice experience for me to be on. Um, and if you ever need me to come back on, I'm more than welcome to do awesome. that. Awesome. Maybe happy. we'll talk about mood time and being fat after training. I think we both <laughs> have a story about that. But dude, Kevin, thanks so much for coming on, man. You're an awesome guy. And uh, we might not agree on everything, but people can still have crazy ideas and be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll catch you later, Kevin. Take it easy. See you, mate. Bye bye bye.